Please allow me to introduce you to Alette Boyle, who is the Senior Scientist in Cryptography and Information Security from NTT Research. She is doing some things, and I heard her sharing some of it yesterday, really some groundbreaking thinking about starting this journey and how do we collect or share the data that we need, but also protect the privacy of individuals, something that really is an ongoing challenge. And so, Alette, I wonder if I can have you come and join us on stage, please. Thanks very much for the introduction. It's a pleasure to be here to tell you a little bit about the research that's going on in the cryptography and information security lab. And I want to start out with something that is not a surprise to anyone in this room. Companies want information about how their, their customers use their products. Okay, this spans all sorts of different ranges from software companies, hardware companies, manufacturers, in fact, any setting where you have a business to consumer enterprise. The information about how the customers are using the products, when they use them, what are the features that are more common, less common, um, what, are, what are the different processes that lead to positive outcomes versus to bugs. This information is crucial, very important for the company to be able to direct their future efforts and to help to improve the, the product for the next step. And in fact, this information is there these devices, each and every one of them, is capable of recording this information, collecting it, and actually sending it back to the company. Okay, now at this point, you should be pausing for a second. Indeed, this is a cryptography talk, and I want to mention that the problem, why is this not universally happening? Well, one of the big problems is privacy. In fact, in recent years, there's been tremendous backlash in companies that in the bottom line, consumers do not want to be tracked. This is an invasion of their privacy. As a result, companies have been wildly pulling back in a lot of their, their tracking programs and switching over to different alternatives. For example, several companies now have opt-in, uh, that the customer has to actually opt in to allow their data to be recorded. Uh, of course, this is dramatically limiting to what they'll end at the, at the end of the day. Some companies are even resorting to paying customers in order to get this data, it's so important to them. But even worse, some data, even if you pay a customer, simply cannot be collected. Okay, for example, uh, one of the big things that's come up from the last years are strengthened laws for consumer pr protection acts, such as the one in California, GDPR, if you've heard, across Europe. These laws protect the, the privacy of the consumer and, and prevent us from actually gathering this information. In addition, some information is maybe even too sensitive to ask the customer for. I mean, think about yourself. Would you want you know, the company to be keeping track of exactly which, for example, websites you went to, which searches, what, uh, you know, where did you go at various times of day? This information, in some cases, even asking to collect it would already be de detrimental to the company. So what do we have? As a result, the companies are stuck. They're stuck with limited data, tremendously limited data, biased data in many cases. For example, with opt-in, you're gonna get skewed to, to the distribution of the subpopulation that's more okay with giving up their privacy, typically the younger generation. And in many cases, they're stuck with no data at all. Okay, and I wanna pause for a second now and make an important distinction. What I've described here is particularly relevant to the data of the individual. Okay, for example, I don't want my personal data to be collected. On the other hand, in many cases for the company, this is overkill. You know, with all due respect, these large companies do not actually care necessarily about what I'm specifically doing, but rather what would be sufficient is aggregate information. Things like what are the most common sources of error or what are the, the more or least frequently used features. And this is the distinction of the data of the individual versus aggregate. And this is the, the question that I want to address right now today. Is there a way that a business can leverage these aggregate statistics, which are okay to collect, or, or rather much more okay, without the exposure 
of the risks and the problem and the responsibilities of actually learning the private data of the individual. And this is where cryptography steps in. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, a, um, an exciting new direction of technological development coming from the Syslab and collaborators of what we refer to as a private telemetry system. So here, this is a cryptographic technology that allows us to privately leverage aggregate data without ever actually learning or even seeing the data of the individual. So let me tell you a little bit about the technology. Here, this is a cryptographic protocol that allows us to hide data while still supporting aggregation. Okay, so somewhat more technically, what happens is that the private data of an individual, for example, suppose this is the website that somebody accessed, okay, this is the secret information, we've developed a way that you can split this information into two pieces, okay, such that, for example, oops, excuse me, for example here, if I, I see that this, this is coming from customer X, but the data that I actually receive from them gives me no information about their private data. Okay, it looks just like a random sequence of zeros and ones cryptographically. Okay, so now this information can be kind of stored and aggregated in each of these two separate uh, entities, and I'll address a little bit about these entities in, uh, shortly. Now consider the ne next customer. Same game, okay? Now here our information has got a little bit more interesting, perhaps, our favorite NTT research CEO. But again, this information gets split into two pieces, which can now be aggregated together with the previous, okay? So this is not, I don't have to store, in fact, all the information of all these people. You can collectively, every time information comes in, it sort of gets aggregated in, but shrinks down. Okay, and it maintains the fact that still each of these individual entities here do not know anything about the specifics, and so on and so forth, okay? So here, this action of splitting the data serves a few purposes. Of course, the most important is, is this privacy and ability to aggregate. So indeed, at the end, the conclusion here, we can take whatever information is, is, is currently stored on these two locations, bring them together, and learn only some sort of aggregate statistics. For example, something like histogram counts, what were the, the different websites that were visited across the entire population, or averages, standard deviations, things of this sort, while never, never being uh, subjected to, in fact, the individual's data. Okay? So one of the exciting things about serving as, as a foundational researcher is that it has a combination of, of both sides of, of beauty in some sense. So I am focusing on the, the technological development and the math, the, the beauty of, of designing these technologies. But this is one particular case where I think it's very exciting that this math and beauty can translate over to something that actually in a very short period of time could become a product. Okay, so this, is a potential aim for, for companies, okay? So companies want the data, the aggregate data of their customers. And here, NTT could think about serving as a third party. So this would, for example, be outsourced to NTT to try to gather this information in a private manner. Okay, and we saw here, remember that there were these two different boxes. So NTT would serve as one of these boxes. The second box, Okay, it needs to be the case that these, these uh, do not, you know, uh, send information back and forth during the process to maintain privacy. However, there already exist services here that act as the second box. Okay, so for example, the Internet Security Research Group uh, identified the need for such a service and has something referred to as the Divi Up product. Um, this is just a a service that can be used as the second box. And now what happens? Now the consumers can split their data. In fact, they can even send both shares to NTT as long as one of them is hidden or encrypted in some way. NTT can take this information, pass on the second share over here to be decrypted. 
And this information can be combined up to the point where once you have sufficiently many consumers that have their aggregate information in here, only at that point will the aggregates be given to the company. Okay, so again, a few things to, to mention here. The fact that we have this splitting is important not only for privacy, but also a tremendous amount for efficiency. The fact that we have this split allows us to have very low overhead in these solutions. In fact, we already have uh, partial implementations of, of some of these different technologies. Okay? And the, the most important, as I've mentioned, is that NTT, the company, and in fact also this third-party service, none of them ever throughout the process are exposed to the data of the individuals. This is something that I want you to let your imaginations run wild of different application settings. Okay, so think about where are cases where you want to learn information, aggregate information about user statistics. For mobile phones, for uh, network providers, modern cars, appliance makers, all sorts of ranges of things. And to date, the, the statistics I've mentioned here, so things like histogram, mean, standard deviation, so forth, these are ones that are already ready for deployment. And in fact, what's next in terms of the, the technology is something that you tell me. I'd love to have conversations with people to try to understand what are different sorts of settings. For example, what are different sorts of application settings and different sorts of information? What are the, the types of aggregate data? What sort of statistics uh, and so forth is it that would actually be useful for for implementation. So if any of you see me around today, uh, please stop by, I'd be happy to talk. And with that, I will conclude. Thank you so much.